Welcome back to another Bitcoin update using technical analysis. Thanks for joining me again, guys. We are going to track the Bitcoin journey to its new all time high, however far that goes, because overnight we just saw it hit its new all time high. But there's going to be plenty more of these during this next journey to its price discovery, massive all time high. If you missed yesterday's video, it was on why I think we may get to a $200,000 Bitcoin. I think it's nuts, but I've got a few tools in there. That's my research at this point in time to get us there. So I still think we have a possible 10x from this point. I find it crazy, but we're going to track this journey along the way. And today I want to update you with the price and what I am looking at in terms of best case scenarios, worst case scenarios at this particular trading point, because I get a lot of comments come up saying, I've just bought Bitcoin. What should I do? Should I sell? Should I buy it back lower? Should I wait? What should I do? So I want to cover it in the video today and look at how we can invest in Bitcoin. If you haven't already, like the video down below, hit the subscribe button and join us for the Bitcoin journey on the channel here where we look at everything in the investment world, stocks, cryptocurrencies, and of course the economic market cycle. So subscribe, like, not financial advice, remember that, and let's dive across into the charts. The Bitcoin chart, and we can see we just hit an all time high, 19,864. And previously we were at 19,666, so a couple of hundred dollars over. We have had the highest monthly close ever on Bitcoin. So we're above the old all time high as well. So that's another strong signal to me. We closed at 19,700, all time high 19,666. So this is just adding to the macro picture. All right, so from here, what can we expect? Now, what I expect to happen is one of three scenarios. You can see those here. Scenario one, no follow through and we correct by 20 to 40%. Let's look at the 20 MA as well. So that's the moving average. Scenario two, we blow through these tops. What target are we looking at? But then correct to on top of the old all time high. So if you know from the channel, we have covered stocks for many, many, many months now and we know on the charts that we get a support and resistance flip. So at the moment, the around $20,000 is the resistance. Maybe we blow through that top, come back and sit on that old high and then the old resistance becomes support. Scenario three, wind up at these levels. So we just sit around these levels, start to wind up on a smaller time frame. We get lower volatility and wait for the next move up. So they're the three scenarios that I see play out. What does that look like? on the chart. Well, let's bring it back down to a weekly chart. And from this point here, we could see a wind up. So somewhere around here, maybe we get that small dip to those levels. I'm liking around that $16,000 level. I think we've seen the days of 12,000, 13,000. I don't think it's going to come back. And if it does, it would be very, very brief, just like we saw with the COVID drop. 3,000, 4,000 was extremely brief and it started to base out above $6,000. So that's one of the scenarios. I think if we wind up here, we will get a nice big push up to around that 25, 26, maybe even 30,000. And that's based on some fibs that we have looked at. The other scenario was to blow through these tops and come back and sit on top. So I'll clear this one off. And from that point, that becomes our old new support. I think this is more likely than it just crashing from this point, but I'm not holding anything out at this point. Bitcoin has been crazy. It's gone straight up. So that's why I'm thinking we may see a bit of a pullback. I like the look of this and it really just replicates what we've seen there. How amazing is that? I don't know. I look at it. That's pretty much the same move that we've just seen and what happened after this move, we saw a lot of this. Now, I don't think this is going to happen and it's going to come all the way back down to this level. Crazy things have happened, of course. But if I'm playing with my probabilities, then I like the look of it probably basing out above that 14-ish K. If not, then the 16 K, because you can see there's some, some high numbers up here. There's a bit of congestion. And I think that might be a way to go. Something like, like that, of course but we could have some playing around at this point. Maybe we see it early into 2021. Now, scenario number three that I had here, wind up at the levels, blow off through the top, uh, no follow through. So 
The other scenario we were looking at was a no follow through option. And pretty much from this point, I think we would see it fall back to these levels. And why I'm choosing that is because of this measured move. We hit it from the top. There's about 20% brings us to that 15 ish level and 30% brings us down to the 13 or $14,000 level. They're the two scenarios that I see happening. I, I really think 12K is out of the question at this point, just with how strong the volume has been. So as that burst through, we got volume increasing on the way up. And I think that's probably gonna be the holding point for us. So they're the three scenarios. What do we do after that? What should we do? My best case, 40, present correction from here. Now when I say best case, I mean that's the best case to be buying up again. So best case, we, we don't go any further up and we drop 40%. So we're in a bull market now, we've confirmed that. And if we get a drop of 40%, that should bring us somewhere to our 20 MA. So let's get that measured move again, top of here. 35% brings us to the top of this MA, so that's our moving average. We know in bull markets that the market likes to come back and test that moving average on its way up. So if you don't believe me, go back, test 2016, 2017 using a moving average, and then come back to the market here, and you can see it's beginning to happen again. It doesn't have to touch on it. It can just miss it by a little bit, move and then come back, but really we're waiting for time to catch up. And that's, that's what I think has to happen at some point. And it definitely will happen at some point. Time will catch up to the price. Whether that means price is further down or a little bit further up is unknown at this point. Moving across to the other scenarios I had, worst case, we climb up 20, 25K, which we've talked about without looking back. And then I think it would come back and sit on some old resistance. So that becomes support. Last thing is create, uh, well, my view is climbs a little more, pauses, for several days to weeks because I really do think time has to catch up at this point. It's just been too fast, too straight at this point and creates a trading range between that 16 and 17 and then wherever that high is. So if we look at this as an example, I think maybe we push up and it just comes back and does its little testy thing, all right? We get a bit of a triangle, a bit of a flag pattern, and then we decide what we do from there. The last thing I had on here was overall, basically what I think is gonna happen. I think we'll have to see lower prices than where we're currently sitting. So I, I believe at this point, from what I can see on the chart, I think we will definitely see lower prices than 19,600. We're currently at 19,400. So I think we're going to see prices lower than that. So if I can hold out and I can basically look after my emotions through this with a trading plan, then I think I can pick up lower Bitcoin, but I just have to wait. And even if this thing goes to 22, 23,000, I think it may still come back a little bit lower than where we currently sit at 19. I don't think we've seen the last of 16 or 17,000. That's essentially what I'm saying. If you haven't bought anything yet, ask yourself, why the hell not? What is the risk of missing this price and then getting in at 22 later to see it drop back to 17 or 18? Can you handle that? Really, you're only looking at a 10 to 15% drop to those levels that I think, you might have a different view, but I, d I can't see it dropping too much more. And if I'm going to risk it, then why would I bother doing that? Why not just buy a little bit now and a little bit later? So to those levels, it's only 20% to the 15K, to 17K, it's 14%. It sounds like a lot, but when this market has just doubled in a matter of two months, three months, September, October, November, it's doubled in three months. 10 to 15% is, is nothing for these sorts of markets. So don't let that hold you back. The last thing I have here is a little bit of a dollar cost averaging method. Buy a third now, buy a third next week, and check the chart pattern, of course. Buy a third a week after that. Lastly, if the market dumps to 16K, I would look to go in heavier, maybe put in like two thirds of the amount that I'm looking to invest and then hold on to one third more just in case it goes a bit lower. But if it goes a bit further up, it doesn't matter because I've got the bulk of what I wanted to invest at that lower level. So if it goes to 16, boom, two thirds of my initial capital goes in, climbs back again to 18, 19, 20K. Okay, fine, no worries. The next week, drop the last third in. My average price is still at the lower end because I bought more lower than I did higher. So that's my scenarios at this point. We're gonna keep tracking 
this Bitcoin market because right now it is starting to heat up. We're about to break, conf uh, confirm the break of the all time high, sit above that, start to consolidate above those levels in the coming weeks, maybe one to two months is what I'm thinking as a worst case scenario. So let's keep tracking this, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, like the video up if you found some value from this. I hope I can give some extra value if, if I am, let me know in the comments if you want more questions answered. I'm basically going through what I do on a regular basis here anyway. It's looking at scenarios that could play out and then giving myself options of what could happen if these scenarios played out. So let us know in the comments, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, stick around for more Bitcoin and Ethereum updates. I'm probably gonna get into some Ripple and Link as well. They're also big players in the space. And of course, continue on with technical analysis on our ASX stocks. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you wanna buy some Bitcoin, there are links in the description to Independent Reserve and SwiftX, both Aussie exchanges. Both have their fantastic features of extra altcoins, etc., like that. So check those out if you wanna buy some Bitcoin. I'll wrap it up there and I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.